This R. Askredit user asks people who work in law enforcement, what does work like right now? We had a vigilante. A terrorist ambushed our sheriffs yesterday. One of the officers died. A young man with his second child due next week. That on top of protests. COVID ordinance upkeep. My friends in law enforcement are having a hard time. Edit. I misused the word vigilante. DN. Do you have a link to an article? Link. Didn't he get killed by some kind of domestic terrorist? I have a friend who is a detective. Usually sits behind a desk. Lately they have put her in an unmarked car and given her a shopping center to patrol. She says it's boring as HL. Her normal job is dealing with problems in the home involving children oftentimes. A lot of abuse both sexually and physically. This has caused her to have to have a lot of therapy. It puts her in an awful headspace. That is in normal times. Now she has to deal with a situation where she agrees 100% with the protesters. But there is no real way for her to genuinely express this. I imagine anyways. The last part not the first. While at the same time she has her fellow officers. Including a few that my wife and I know through the same way we know her. Saying some pretty nasty things about the BLM movement and the protesters in general. It's a rough time for her. Especially when she needs therapy during normal times. One of the officers we mutually know I will use the name Jane Doe for. My friend that I'm talking about has a great saying. I like Jane. But I hate Officer Doe. I think that's a pretty powerful statement. I work in a prison. I'm surrounded by racists. I'm surrounded by people calling for the US military to open fire on American citizens. I'm fairly certain I've heard the N-word thrown around more times in the last two weeks than I have in my entire life. From a relative whose husband works for the Secret Service at the White House. My husband was on the front lines of the recent White House protest. It was a long night for me. But it was a much much longer night for many others. We see the burning buildings, the broken glass. We hear about the tear gas and barricades. What we don't hear and see is this. This is what my husband remembers most. He remembers the bridge makers, the people there that are angry, hurt and in pain, but they build a bridge anyway. The people that are scared, tired and struggling, but build a bridge anyway. They see the way through this as peaceful and hopeful. He told me of a black woman. Whose face is frozen in his mind. She stood between him and a swarming group of people who wished death. Violence and all other kinds of things upon him. Shouting back at him she said. I got you. Shouting to the protesters she said. This isn't the way. Quote. These voices are being drowned out. But I believe these voices are the ones who will not just change minds but change hearts. I have no judgment to pass because I can't understand. But I want people to know that mixed with the sad, terrible, and ugly there is hope. There are bridges. Quote. This is a, a really nice sentiment but I've been at the White House several days this week including last night and we haven't seen Secret Service out in a while. After Monday night it's just been ATF. Dia, BP and BOP with a little National Guard sprinkled in. Are the WH protests all day, every day or organized, scheduled? Wondering if I can just randomly show up. You can just show up. This weekend there was a lot of scheduled stuff. But whenever works for you to go show up is fine. Be ready to be flexible about where you end up. On Wednesday I ended up in sort of a roaming group where we would walk for a while and then sit for a while and people would get up and talk. The leaders had a great sound system and I learned a lot from that experience. It's exhausting and depressing. I can't go an hour without someone flipping me off or screaming, fuck the police. I'm just as upset about the murder of George Floyd and police brutality in general as anyone else. I wanted to be a cop to make a positive difference in my community. 
I work for an incredible agency that hires high caliber folks and I've never once seen any of my co-workers do their jobs with any malice of hatred toward anyone. I just want to be happy to go to work again. Where I'm at there's been plenty of protests and I've not had a day off in over a week now. But honestly the protesters here have been respectful, well-mannered, and honestly a great representation of how things should be. I've had great conversations with them and think some good came of it. Sure I had one or two get in my face screaming and such but it really didn't bother me cause of the above paragraph. I'd say, from my experience, most people are an anti-cop per se. They are anti-excessive force and violation of rights. And I'm with them. Protest the ST out of it. There is a need for change and I'm ready for it. Help me get these knuckle draggers out so we can all have better days. Protest the ST out of it. There is a need for change and I'm ready for it. Help me get these knuckle draggers out so we can all have better days. You know what would be better than people protesting? Good cops such as yourself outing or arresting the bad ones. That blue wall of silence is AMR though huh? That's exactly what it will take. I've never shied away from calling other cops on their CP or reporting it. I've arrested a cop before and I'll do it again. I feel that blue line stuff was cool at first but somehow it's warped some cops minds that we have to protect our careers over the public. To me that's whack. I'm 100% for transparency and reform if it makes the world a better place. And I'm very open to discussing opinions on how to improve policing. What do you think would be suitable legal changes to ensure all criminal behavior by cops is properly judged and don't allow existence the blue wall? I feel that 8 can't wait will do more harm to the movement since most rules seem either unclear or useless and it'll likely reduce momentum of protests. All this from civilian in Europe perspective. Nothing has changed for me or my department. No protests or riots that I'm aware of. Only thing abnormal these past two weeks are the amount of suicides and attempted suicides. Usually that spike in suicides happen around the holidays. But the pandemic is keeping people from getting treatment and they're left alone with their own thoughts for too long. Sort by controversial and buckle the FK up. Yeah I did that to see the comments it was a bumpy ride and I forgot the seatbelt. On the job 8 years. 5 in my current place. 3 as a detective. Work is fine. Our local communities went out and protested. We were out there to support them. We didn't have any rioting or looting. I wish all places could say the same. Genuinely curious, a lot of the protesters are calling for a reform of police structure by breaking up the police into different sectors. Social workers going out for domestic issues. Specialized workers for situations like homeless people etc. In a small town area this would be different. Probably done in the same way the fire department doubles up as EMT workers. Do you think that would help work in your area? Excellent question. Most of my region has volunteer EMT and firefighters. Most of which are spread quite thin as it is. I'd feel more comfortable with well-trained officers responding to initial calls. Then referring out to the appropriate department. We have strong domestic violence support groups in the area. As well as a very proactive homeless outreach. But in terms of responding to calls. The police when property trained and made aware of their resources, have the edge. The unfortunate truth is that those agencies don't go there for something in progress because a lot of them are tumultuous at best. The reason a domestic gets bad enough to necessitate police intervention is usually because things have hit a boiling point and a call is made. A lot of times, that's because a crime has committed. If I'm responding to an active domestic incident, I have an obligation to the victim. Removing the aggressor is paramount. I'm equipped and trained to do that. But I'm also obligated to tend to the needs of the victim. On scene I'm ensuring that the victim is put immediately in contact with a group that specializes in that. They're staffed with women who have been through it all. And can speak to a victim in a way that I will never be able to. 
They can give them the resources that I can't. And they can make them feel safe and empowered in a way I can't. Being a good cop doesn't mean you can do everything. It means you have a proper system set up to allow people who do things best to do them. Same thing with a homeless call. If the police need to be there, then we need to be there. As we all know homelessness goes hand in hand with mental illness. I'm responding to that incident with that knowledge. I can use my training and skill set to recognize that and deal with it appropriately. Excellent response. But in terms of responding to calls. The police. When property trained and made aware of their resources. Have the edge. I think this is the best statement I've seen that gets to the core of the issue and change people want. Maybe some areas need training in how to use those resources, I'm living in the OC area. Which has a lot of these resources available but I called 911 once for a family member that was unstable and threatening to hurt themselves. The police showed up and one of them pulled a gun while the other talked. The situation was not at a boiling point as the family member in question calmed down immediately but it made me apprehensive calling the police ever again. They just cuffed them and took them away at that point too. This might be an issue with the police being overworked as an area like this might have them working excessively in responding to multiple situations or understaffed and allowing the wrong people in. As one bad cop can make them bad, that's why I wanted to know how smaller areas would handle this as they have even less resources to work with but as mentioned. It's how the community handles it altogether. Being a good cop doesn't mean you can do everything. It means you have a proper system set up to allow people who do things best to do them. Quote, I hope with all these protests and demands for change that things start looking like your responses. I have a family member that retired from MPD a few years ago and his wife was a 911 dispatcher for Minneapolis. He just packed up anything related to law enforcement because he's terrified that someone is going to break in and attack the family. He's been in touch with his former co-workers and it sounds like officers are quitting left and right. Which is part of the reason they've been working insane hours. The city was also running about 400 officers short before all of this happened. Ironically, if he had retired at 55 like he had planned, his last day would have been when the riots began. I work in a smaller police department in NJ. We have a protest this week and the department is walking with the protesters. Surrounding departments have had their protests and all were peaceful. In the US there is a divide in how police are held to certain standards. There are small to mid-size municipal departments with a relatively decent town population. The pay is high and the standards are higher in the job. If you FK up it's your AS. We get a lot of mandatory training with more that gets piled on every year. Especially de-escalation and dealing with mentally unstable persons. I work in this area and am typically looked down upon by the bottom departments I'm about to describe because we aren't real cops and our job is too easy. City departments and those large sheriff departments in the south are usually the places with the problems. There are a lot of cops to be accounted for and corruption is usually city-wide going all the way to the mayor sometimes. In a lot of respects. HBO's The Wire is a very accurate representation of most. Not all. Cities. The pay is usually not as good and the hours are worse. It's also a lot easier to get hired into these jobs so the candidate pull is naturally shittier. State police are busy sucking their own DK and can do no wrong. No one likes them. Joking. Can someone import that style of policing here? Please? My midsize. Alabama City tear gassed and rubber bulleted a peaceful protest on Wednesday with the mayor's blessing then the mayor left town on vacation the next day. Our police chief had a press conference where he showed an Antifa poster that was literally a quote from the Declaration of Independence. They showed everyone why there's protests. Username definitely check out. Facebook friend as a cop. They gave him 24 hours off yesterday. Before that he put in 100 hours in 7 days.
He pretty much slept through his day off. Yep. My brother's a cop. Has worked 20 plus hour days in the past week. For a position that requires a level head. Making someone work that many hours seems like sabotage. Tell that to the doctors doing 48 hour on call shifts at the hospital. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more videos.